there, welcome. Welcome friends, welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be here with you today. And this is a week I've been looking forward to for a long time. Going to have the same guest on every day this week. And after you hear her today, you will re realize why we do this. And also the subject is so important. My guest, her name is Pam Stenzel and she has a ministry to teenagers. In fact, she speaks to 500,000 every year on the subject of sex and purity and abstinence. Perhaps one of the most important ministries uh, in the world today. You are going to love her and she has that kind of personality that can captivate young people. So uh, please remember she'll be on every day this week with wonderful, wonderful information. And I, I've got something here I want to read to you. This is from one of our wonderful viewers in Michigan. I think the crew will like this too. Dear homekeepers, I want to tell you that my dog knows the word homekeepers. She, <laughs> she is 13 years old and I can say sit and she will not. But if I say, let's go watch homekeepers, she jumps up and down and heads to the living room. Isn't that, isn't that great? Uh, hey, Trudy, if you're watching, would you send us a picture of the dog, please? I'm going to keep this card forever. That, that is truly one of a kind. And we love all our viewers out there. And, and it's, it's an honor for us to receive your mail and to just consider that you took the time to write to us. We thank you. Okay, I'm going to uh, make some pasta with spinach and ricotta cheese. Ooh, sounds good. Uh, with Stephanie in just a minute. In fact, she's got the spinach and the garlic going right now, and it smells divine. Um, I'll join her, though, after we talk about this book uh, from uh, Pam Stenzel, and you're going to meet her in a few minutes, wonderful, wonderful gal. Sex has a price tag. And if you can't talk about something like this, uh, really try to think what a problem we have today. First of all, with abortion, God help us, God forgive us. And then we have a lot of diseases that Pam will uh, explain, as well as pregnancies, out of wedlock and all. And it's time that we really teach our children what the Bible says about it, what God says about it. So we want to offer you this book. It's called Sex Has a Price. And for only $15, it's a wonderful book the way it's laid out. Uh, very understandable and covers the subject so well. And I'm just really encouraging you to get this book, 1-800-229-0059 if you want to use your credit card. Or write to me at Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Well, Stephanie, what do you think about that dog? I love it. <laughs> my dog is my best friend, so I get it. Have you taught your dog about Home Keepers, though? Yeah. No. Not really. No. Okay, we have... Okay, sauteed some garlic. Yes, yeah. so I have some garlic, and then we took spinach. Frozen spinach. We put it in a bowl with some paper towels, let it thaw, all and, the, all the and water out. Squished it out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I had that sauteing. So now I'm gonna add. That's ricotta. A, yep. I'm gonna add a cup of ricotta, which I'm not saying it right. So mm -hmm. I, I don't really know how you're supposed to. Um, a little bit of water. water. And we've already uh, cooked, cooked the noodles. The uh, salt ricotta. and pepper. Rotini. Yes. This is going to be one of those ex unbelievably simple but yummy recipes. I so think if you want something for an, a weeknight when you just don't feel like yes. doing a whole lot, this is the recipe. You, and you know you add um, a little bit of Parmesan. So could, that was salt, pepper, ricotta, water, spinach. And, a hard, and, and add a hard roll and a salad. And oh, boy, yeah. You got it. So there's some Parmesan. We're going to put some of that on top, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to let this cook for a minute. I'm going to put the pasta in, and you're going to taste it. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. I am oh. looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. uh, if we had smell -o vision people, you would be so happy and so hungry. Absolutely. But let that get kind of warm. Yeah. I'm letting it get warm. Mm -hmm. You want to take care of my mess? Yes. <laughs> you uh, just you, stand there and look pretty. If you... <laughs> <laughs> if you... Uh, Noticed it doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't I mean, big nothing. Mess. The biggest thing is get, making sure you get the spinach out so it can thaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you could even do that in the microwave and squish the water mm -hmm. out. I mean. Good. Okay. So do you want to give me the pasta? All right. Thank you. Let's 
Let's get this mixed up in here. You're gonna like Got this. It. Oh, thank you. You're gonna love it. So nice to have an assistant. So I'm just gonna mix this up. Mmm. I mean, you couldn't get more simple than this and have a yummy. And if you absolutely have to have meat, you could, you could put someone in there. But who was I talking to the other days? Somebody here. That in America meat is the entree and that's not true around the world it's not and so um, here you know if you you're a, you're a real man if you can eat 16 ounce steak but <laughs> I'm a real man no <laughs> 16 ounces <laughs> this is my man right here <laughs> okay okay so here oi <laughs> No, the truth is I like a, a little piece. She has laughed at the amount of, you know, like a London broil or oh, She or a brings this stuff in for lunch, and I'm like, that's <laughs> two bites. Where, where's the rest of it? A little oh. appetizer. She brings soup in, and it's like half of a baby jar, and that's her lunch. I'm like, I don't understand this at all. Oh, boy. I'm good. Ever this good. is all you. Oh, you're not going to taste it? Mm -mm. We should explain why she doesn't taste it because if she took one bite she'd eat the whole skillet full something maybe like that. the whole skillet i don't know i just i know i love pasta and i and cheese and all of it mm -hmm. and it's very good but you know what it's light it's not real heavy really uh-huh so really like give me give me oh yeah talk to we'll me we'll put a little more um paint me a junk. picture would you mm -hmm. paint me a picture how's that how's that uh, give me words oh yummy it's yummy yum, words it's yummy it's it's light and I, I would like a hard Chicago roll with it with some really butter. good fresh butter. Oh, uh -huh. slathered with butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, see, I went to a wedding this weekend. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have to be super good now because they had bacon-wrapped scallops. Mm -hmm. It was the best bite of food I ever had in my whole entire life. Are you going to learn to fix them? And I'm hoping. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm emailing to see if somebody will share the recipe with me because I have to sure know what it was sauteed in. I have to know. Okay, we're going to follow key. through on that. Yes. And Rose Hill Plantation. Because she's, know. that's all she's talked about since she got back. Okay, I think you're anxious to meet Pam, and I'm anxious for you to meet her. There's nobody like her. And uh, so if you want this recipe, that information is coming up on screen. It's absolutely free. Glad to get it to you. And after that, you'll meet Pam Stenzel. You will love her. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Welcome to Homekeepers, Pam. So good to be with you today. It, it's such a, a pleasure to have you for the whole week. Yes. And um, I've done this a couple times, and, and there's two requirements, you know, to have the same guest for a week, and that is a really important subject and somebody who can communicate it. And, girl, you can. Uh, I've, I've watched all your videos, so I, I feel like I know you. Yeah. And on this first day, um, I'd like to just... Uh, let the audience meet you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, knowing that you speak to a half a million young people every year on the subject of purity, but I want to know how you came to that. So give me your life story. Yeah, well, th probably the whole reason I do what I do is because of the very beginning of my life. And, and what, 54 years ago now, a young teenage girl became pregnant, had a lot of difficult choices to make maybe more so than some young girls because she was raped, but she chose to give her child life and then to place that child with an adoptive family, and that child was me. My biological father is a rapist. I don't even know my ethnicity, but I am still a human being, and I still have value, and I don't believe that my life is worth less than anyone else's just because of the way I was conceived, and don't believe that I deserve the death penalty simply because of the crime of my biological father. And you know, I always knew growing up because not only did my birth mother give me my life, but she gave me this amazing family, wonderful parents who loved Jesus, brought me to church from the time I was little. Yeah, was she, was she, 
know enough about everything. Was she involved with the lady who adopted you, the family who adopted you? My birth mom? Your birth mother. No, no. Back in the it 60s. It went through a... Because of my age. Yeah. <laughs> I'm older. You know, adoption looks completely different right, today. Right, right. Where Where the birth mother can have that relation. Ba back in the 60s and 70s, it wasn't done that way. So... So, um, so God says this family. Yeah, well, <laughs> and luckily she went through uh, in Michigan through St. Louis Baptist Children's Home. So, um, you know, at the time, yeah. you know, I had a wonderful Christian family, and and uh, my parents not only adopted me. My, well, my mom and dad had trouble getting pregnant, and seven years into trying, they they adopted me, and then three weeks later, my mom found out she was pregnant and had my brother, <laughs> and then never again. So they, they adopted six more, so I'm the oldest of eight, and um, it's just been an amazing journey, and, and really so grateful to my adoptive, you know, my, my parents were, were loved Jesus, I, like I said, dragged mm -hmm. me to church. I was at church every time the door was open. Right. You know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Awana, Wednesday night, mm -hmm. youth, I mean, I was at church all the time. And uh, just had such a wonderful upbringing. But, you know, my, my birth mother is my hero because what a brave thing that she did to, to, to carry years, all of the pain, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and to not and only the shame. give. And the shame and whatever she had to go through. I did find out from my caseworker who I got to know over the years because she also helped with the adoptions of some of my siblings that, that my birth mother at the time uh, that she, I don't know about conceived me, but at, at the time that she gave birth to me was in foster care. So uh, oh I've always Lord. said that if I had been born in 1975 and not 1965, I would have probably been killed by the state. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really thankful to the pro-life people in Michigan mm -hmm. who, who consistently have said and, and did say at that point that every life has value. Yeah, now it's obvious your, your ministry today, uh, at least partially was birthed in the fact that you worked in a crisis pregnancy center for nine years. Years, yeah, and I got my first taste of it. I was a student at Moody Bible Institute, went right from high school to Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. And at, at Moody, we had to do practical Christian ministry, and they first assigned me to Awana, and I was like, I don't want to do Awana. Please don't make me do Awana. <laughs> and I actually talked them into letting me volunteer, 18 years old, Bible college student, at a pregnancy center in downtown Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it gave me my real first taste of, of walking alongside these women. And, and what I firmly believe is that what, what a, a woman in a crisis pregnancy, what she needs is love and care and support. And, and the, the answer to a crisis pregnancy isn't to end the pregnancy, it's to end the crisis. And, and really believe that we can change not only save a baby's mm -hmm. life, but we can change a woman's life by walking alongside her. So I began to do that, followed God's calling, saying I need to be educated to do this. This is what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And ended up, uh, my husband and I, I met him at Moody. We ended up in Minneapolis and lived there for a lot of years until I couldn't stand the cold. But um, I, welcome to Florida. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I, I uh, ran the uh, Alpha Women's Center there in uh, outside of Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, and and the whole speaking thing came. It's crazy. I was I would go to youth pastors. You know, I had to raise money. Our pregnancy clinics are all nonprofit. Right. And I'd go to these youth pastors and say, you know, I'd much rather see your kids at youth group on Wednesday night or Sunday night than have to see them in my clinic during the week. And and back in the day, and sadly, I mean, you hope it's not still the case, but. Mm -hmm. Back, certainly back in the early 90s, the, they, they were like, well, not our kids that go to church. And I'm like, just a minute. <laughs> um, let, let's see, here's my intake at my pregnancy clinic. When was the first day of your last period and where do you go to church? <laughs> I mean, I, I know it's your kids. You're and, kidding. So That's I, one of the questions. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, we wanted to know because I wanted to know if there was either no faith to mm -hmm. draw on in mm -hmm. our counseling or, or what we were dealing with. Mm -hmm. So it's a question we asked. So I knew, you know. And um, so I began to speak to students uh, in churches, just around the you know suburbs of Minneapolis, kind of where I lived. And 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 a businessman, unbeknown, I still don't know to this day who he was, went to Youth for Christ in Minneapolis and said, "There is a little pregnancy center director down here who's talking <laughs> about sex to kids, and somebody needs to put that on video." And he wrote a check for twenty thousand oh dollars. I partnered God. with Youth for Christ in 1994. We created the first DVD called "Sex Has a Price Tag," and Subsequently, mm -hmm. it got translated in 11 languages and used in 41 countries around the world. And <laughs> so my poor husband at the time, he was like, are, are you going to speak or are, are, are you going to run this pregnancy center? So uh, we moved to rural Minnesota where he farmed then with his family and was home full time mm -hmm. with our kids. We have three kids. 
and was able to allow me to travel and. And, and, and you've it. been a major speaker for Acquire the Fire. That yep. has thousands of kids. Yeah, that was a killer year. I toured with them. I did a couple of years, but one year, Ron Luce really, he said, if you're going to come, you know, do Acquire the Fire, you've got to agree to all this whole year, right? Mm -hmm. 19 cities. So, oh, my poor family. I was speaking in schools wherever during the week and then mm -hmm. flying every weekend to yeah, speak now with the Also, crew. in your rather impressive uh, resume, you've been around the world. Now, mm -hmm. does Africa youth African youth have the same problems, uh, South American youth, do you give them the same message? Yeah, a, a, lot of, a lot of it's the same. I mean, students are students, I mean, we're all sexual beings, God created us that way. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is always, no matter where we are, you know, the enemy is going to attack you where mm -hmm. he can quickly destroy you. Mm -hmm. so, so that doesn't change because of boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, when you travel into certain cultures, you've got to be sensitive to, to their culture and, and how things are communicated there. Uh, Africa is one of my favorite, the whole continent is one of my favorite places, South Africa specifically. I've spent. And you talk to them about sex like absolutely, you talk in the absolutely, United States. Absolutely, 100%. And the, the, difference, the difference is numbers. I mean, the, the African youth, especially in South Africa, Botswana, some of our Eastern African countries, are dealing with a higher HIV infection rate than we deal with in the United mm -hmm. States and so there's a whole nother element to a lot of orphans uh, and a lot of orphans because of that a lot of them you know not growing up with families and having you know people talking to them okay, about those things. say in um, Africa do they have the same swampy culture that we have here the attitudes that anything goes hook meat hook up whatever you know what the pro you know what's so sad is that today Every culture is infiltrated by what Hollywood and what we're exporting. I mean, not just us, God obviously us. Western Europe to some extent, but to we've done it. You know, I remember meeting with the president of Uganda and I, I, I met with him to talk about how we were coming to teach abstinence and, and be, it was ABCs, abstinence, be faithful and, and, and carry that through, right? So one partner is only one of you and, and really give that message to um, the Ugandan people. Well, I met with President Yuseveni at the time and he said, he said, listen, before the white people came, he took my hand and he goes, before the people with no skin, and I'm like, I have, <laughs> I have skin, <laughs> I don't know. But he goes, we had family and culture that put those boundaries around, that you were taught. Yep. And he goes, the Western culture came in with their condoms and their and, and everything that we bring in, in the, the, the media and the movies and, and, and these people all have access to it. And they created, we've created a, a lot of the issues. And so you, you can understand why sometimes they feel like, wait a minute, you've caused a lot of the issues and now you're gonna come here and try and tell us how to fix what you <laughs> did. It, it's really sad, you know. But one of the things is true, it's true with the gospel as it is true with it. First of all, this is a gospel message, right? God's creation of, of us, our bodies, his boundary for sex being mm -hmm. only in marriage. And that, that if, you, if you don't follow that, if you shake your fist in God's hand and tell him you don't want him to tell you how to live your life and you can do it your way, there will be a consequence. It's what we call sin, right? Yes, I've heard of it. It's called <laughs> sin. And the wages of sin is? Death. Death. Not occasionally, every single time. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You will reap what you sow. Not because he's mean and angry and vindictive. It has nothing to do with that. That is the natural end result of sin. And the answer, the remedy, the cure for this disease that our culture is infiltrated with and certainly uh, all around the world is the gospel. Mm -hmm. Is the gospel. And so we can bring that truth and that gospel and God's, God's truth into any culture and it will change their lives. I, I've watched some videos where you talk, you're talking to the kids and, and they are riveted to what uh, you're saying. And oh my, they look so young. Oh, <laughs> I, <laughs> and I, I limit my audience. To talk that, about this. No, I, and I limit my audience. I won't speak to kids under seventh grade and it's gotten a little bit rough because some parents are like, well, they need it earlier. My deal is, yeah, probably they do, mm -hmm. but I believe the parent should be the one to, especially mm -hmm. with our very young children. Um, by seventh or eighth grade, we need to have a deeper conversation. And one of the, th and I still believe parents are still the number one. Parents are the ones yes. who should be talking, talking, talking to their students. But um, sometimes it helps. And I've been a parent, you know, I've got mm -hmm. three kids and they went through the teen years. And 
and, and I would drag them to other speakers because if it was me, they'd be like, oh, mom's talking about sex again. And, <laughs> and, and they would go like, Reggie Dabbs is the greatest speaker ever, like I'm chopped liver, because I'm their mom, right? Yeah, so you drag them to hear somebody, somebody else, else talk about be sex. <laughs> because I think teens need that voice once, you know, from someone else on occasion that, that supports what we've been saying. Yeah, you're to not them the only one. Yeah. If you just join me, I'm talking to uh, Pam Stenzel, and uh, as we said at the top of the show, she talks to half a million young people a year about abstinence, purity, and so forth, and may her tribe increase. Now, today I wanted you to get to know her a little bit, give some of her own personal history, but in the days to come, the rest of this week, we're going to talk about diseases. We're going to talk about that uh, pregnancy is really kind of the least of the problem when we think it's the most. And the consequences. Oh, it breaks my heart when I, I would hear her talk about the consequences and the experiences she's had uh, with young people through the years. And it's a heavy price they pay to go it against is. God's plan. It is. You know, a, a spiritual truth, you cannot sin safely. Mm -hmm. You know, our yeah. culture believes our culture that does. we can sin safely and it, it just, just can't use protection. be that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just make sure we'll give you a vaccine and all these little band-aids and it just, it, it doesn't work. And the damage physically, emotionally, spiritually that happens in people's lives is profound. And, and that's why our kids really deserve to understand that before they jump into decisions they're not prepared to make. Yeah, when you were a young girl, what did you want to do? I, I doubt if you said, I want to grow up and speak to kids about sex. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe that was ever anybody's dream. No, no, you know, actually I loved theater and I loved, uh, I was in music and theater. Um, if some people are listening, I don't know if they remember, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, there was a radio show called The Children's Bible Hour. I, and, I've heard of that. Yeah, with Uncle Charlie. I was for 10 years that I did all the radio drama with them. I read the scripts when I was a kid. So a part of, when I went to Moody, I was going into Christian ed actually, and I kind of wanted to do some kind of theater or work mm -hmm. with young people that way. And then oh, this is, God this turned. This is theater for sure. But it is, and I've said that because you know it, 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 that's a gift and a skill because it's a really long monologue when you're in front of kids. Kids always tell me, well, you're really funny. When you're done with this, you can go into stand-up. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh, I'm, I'm always surprised and shouldn't be a, a God's training ground. Yeah. What could be a better training ground than being in a crisis pregnancy center for yep. nine years? Yep. Uh, you know, when you look in the Bible, I mean, he trained his people a long time. People think Paul got saved and started preaching. Started. Not true. Uh, Old Testament, New Testament, thoroughly trained, and so I'm sure nothing at all surprises you anymore. Yeah, you, you, maybe in the midst of it sometimes we don't see what God's doing, but when we get a chance to look back, we see how he was, uh, you know, moving. And, and the other thing is, I had my Jonah moments, and mm -hmm. I'm sure people in uh -huh. ministry would tell you where God said, here, go to the UN and speak to them. And like, no, thank you, not interested. And, but you and, did, and, didn't you? Well, yeah, or he'll send a fish and puke you where he told you to go. So, <laughs> so you learn that you just obey the first time, and even when you might not want to. Yeah, we have a minute or so. Uh, what was the setting for the UN? What group? Was it was the summit on the status of women. Typically, the UN has this summit every spring, and I, I came to speak to uh, delegates from from there, and and to really talk about the fact that that the answer to our STD, HIV mm -hmm. problem is not condoms and, and it, it's actually character. It's actually teaching sexual mm -hmm. integrity and calling people, not only uh, unmarried young people, yeah. but also married people to sexual integrity. And I got done speaking and this guy is like, Pam, we all know that, that you know, kids shouldn't have sex and that staying faithful to your spouse is important, but they're all not gonna do it, so we need to give them condoms. And I, I asked them, I said, what, what's the, What's the um, mission statement of the UN? And, and of course, they didn't say anything at first. I'm like, well, they have a mission statement. Yeah, they, they don't do much. So there is a mission statement. Yeah. Their mission statement is world peace. Yeah. I looked out at them. I said, why? What is stupid mission statement? Why isn't your mission statement safer war? Kill a few less yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> and they all kind of laughed. I said, here's why we say world peace because it's right. And if we put our expectations and our standards mm -hmm. for the right thing, mm -hmm. maybe we would get more. And it's the same with teenagers. If we put our expectations yes, of kids the in the floor, gutter, yeah. we're going to get behavior yes, in the gutter. Gonna... If we raise the bar right. and say you're capable of making good choices, we believe you can do it, we're calling you to do it, we'll get a lot more kids that will do wow. it. Wow. Well, we're, we're out of time for now, but she'll be on the next show. And as I said earlier, we're going to be talking about just the whole spectrum. And our country is so much worse, so much looser than when she started out. Uh, 
anything goes now with anybody, uh, but it doesn't change the truth of the gospel. So be sure you join uh, Pam and me on the next program. But uh, you stay there. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. All right, I, I have a feeling you're going to be looking forward to hearing more of what Pam has to say on the next program. I again want to remind you that we are offering you this book by Pam. Sex has a price tag. For a gift of $15 to this program, we will send it out to you. You can use the 800 number for your credit card, or you can use the address if you'd like to write a check. Let me give you some of the information you'll find in here about abstinence, the consequences from sexual choices. Those are pretty sad because we'll be going on over a lot more of that this week. Uh, biblical definitions and examples, uh, physical diseases and emotional disasters. I, young girls get talked into some kind of compromising situation and it, it almost destroy them emotionally. Um, the taboo subjects and uh, where to go for help, avoiding sexual activity and awkward situations, and dealing with friends, parents, and your own self-respect. So let me suggest that you get this book. Maybe you want to get a couple, get it to your youth pastor. This can be handled in a way that is absolutely right and righteous and, and should be. It's a problem, my friends. Just... Um, I think on the next program, she's going to talk about all the diseases. When I was a young girl, there were two or three diseases. Now there's a multitude, and many of them are viruses that you can't get rid of. You have them all of your life. So I hope that you will take advantage of this week to listen to what Pam has to say, to get the book, and to find ways to really communicate with young people on this all-important subject. It is absolutely necessary. So until next program, please remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.